Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to go to another brewery that I've never tried anything from before. Now, these guys are actually a very well established and very well respected brewery in their local area. They're one of the biggest by volume producer, producers in their state as well as the wider US and I think it is most definitely fair to say that they're very famous for their barrel program I think that's one of the biggest barrel programs in the US as well and also for their big kind of uh, malt forward boozy beers actually but the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a style that I've heard these guys can do very well it's also one of their kind of special yearly releases if you like and I just came across it by happenstance here in Hong Kong and I recognized the brewery's name so I thought you know we really need to have a go at this one and kind of pop the cherry when it comes to this brewery so here we are doing this review but needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one's going to have in store for us hopefully it's another good beer Hopefully it makes for an interesting review, and as always, I hope that you guys watching enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head to the state of Washington in the American Pacific Northwest. We're going to go to the city of Seattle, and to be specific, we're going to go to the Fremont and Ballard districts. And that means that we're going to have a look at my very first beer on the channel from Fremont Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called Melange. It comes in at 10% ABV and this one is a little bit difficult to, to describe because it's actually a cuvee which means that it's a mix of beers but it's a mix of um, imperial stouts and it also has a little bit of porter in it and that porter was specifically brewed for this particular blend of the beer but they release this one the melange along with one or two others every year and uh, these beers are composed of uh, different vintages of the Rusty Nail, which is one of Fremont's Imperial Stouts, which contains licorice and cinnamon. I think it's an Imperial Oatmeal Stout, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, a little bit of a special beer, this one. This was bought at Cave uh, up in uh, Meifu, which is now dead, unfortunately, but they always used to get little small batches of uh, really random things like this. And as I say, this one just caught my eye because I recognized the name at Fremont Brewing and wanted to try one of their things. So uh, yeah, 10% strong ale, I think we have to call this one because of the fact that it is a blend from a very, very famous Pacific Northwest Seattle brewery. We do need to cover more things from the uh, state of Washington on the channel actually, but a special shout out to Joan Gansell, who is a long time follower of the channel from the, uh, the Washington and Oregon area in the US. I'm sure he'll love this review. But as I say, let's crack on and see what this beer has in store for us. So as always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery with this one before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward. All the usual links can be found in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Fremont Brewing Company. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers as I mentioned, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And remember, you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. So just go in there, use the little search bar, put in your hometown, state, county, province, whatever you like. If or if you beers from the era that you search for, they will pop up. Failing that, you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries. You'll find this one in the American playlist along with a number of other things and that is being added to whenever I get the opportunity but remember to check out the playlist of beers from other countries as well because there are some very very interesting things on the channel these days but yeah let's go on to my brewery notes then and I'll tell you a little bit about Fremont Brewing and I have to say I was quite tempted to um, say Fremont with this one because it is just one e but apparently it is Fremont in this one but uh, yeah um, Fremont Brewing are based in Seattle in Washington in the Pacific Northwest in the US but the company was founded back in 2009 by husband and wife team Sarah Nelson and Matt Linsesum or Linsicum, really not sure how to pronounce that. But uh, Matt was previously a lawyer and he actually became specialised in beverage and hospitality law. But as a home brewer himself, he decided that after helping so many people 
open their own food and beverage businesses that he really wanted to have a go at it for himself and kind of indulge his own passion. But uh, Sarah completed a PhD in cultural anthropology, but she ended up working in public service as a policy advisor for the Seattle City Council. But she still maintains an interest in this type of activity and she sits on the Government Affairs Committee of the National Brewers Association and she's also quite heavily involved in the Washington Brewers Guild as well from what I understand. But going back to the, the history of the brewery itself, they opened the brewery in the Fremont area, taking that as their company name, and they originally operated a 15 US barrel kit, which is about 2,300 litres for those of us who don't use the Freedom Unit system, and this was later upgraded to a 30 barrel system, 4,600 litres per brew, and they opened a tap room quite early on, and this was gradually expanded over the years, and this is known as the Urban Beer Garden, and it's still open today, but at maximum they apparently brewed about 24,000 US barrels or 3.8 million litres of beer per year. That was the 2015 figure in their original uh, Fremont location. But that year in 2015, they invested $8 million in a new facility in the Ballard area of the city, just a couple of minutes away apparently, and this used to be home to a print works. But moving there, uh, moving the production there allowed them to expand quite dramatically, and apparently they will reach a, a capacity eventually of 250,000 US barrels, which is in the region of 40 million litres of beer per year. But 2017 saw them introduce their Black Heron project, which specialises in the production of farmhouse and barrel aged sour beers and apparently that's been really quite successful but like I said earlier the main thing is that over the years this brewery have developed a strong reputation for barrel aged beers and uh, they're one of the largest producers in the state of Washington as well as being the third largest brewery by volume overall I think they're the second uh, largest brewery by uh, by volume in terms of independent brewers but recently they went into a partnership in April of 2024 this year just before the time that I'm filming this video the Seattle Hospitality Group SHG bought a controlling stake in the company and they plan to aid the growth of Fremont Brewery along with Pike Brewery whom they purchased in 2021 but as of April 2024 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced uh, 780 different kinds of beer according to Untapped and that number will no doubt continue to increase as time goes on and their beers probably will get out there a little bit more now that they're uh, in this kind of bigger partnership because usually that leads to slightly wider distribution and things like that but um, yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about Fremont Brewing Company for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done. So um, yeah, let's go on and talk a little bit about the beer itself. So, um, as you can maybe see with this one, this is a one American pint can, 473 milliliters or 16 fluid ounces if you are insisting on using the freedom unit scale. But you can see that you've got the heron on this one. I don't think this one is part of the black heron project, but yeah, there were a few beers. Uh, listed uh, that looked quite similar to this one in terms of artwork but you can see plain silver top on the can there the can I have to say looks very nice like we mentioned earlier this is the 2023 vintage which you can see here and this beer actually cost me 128 uh, Hong Kong dollars which translates to about 13 pounds sterling probably about 14 euros and maybe 15 dollars American so I don't know what you would actually pay for a can of this in the, the US, but for an imported Imperial Stout from the States, especially one that's 10% in barley and all of this, I don't think that's too bad, to be quite honest with you. But let me know your own thoughts on that in the comment section below. But to tell you a little bit about the technical detail of this particular beer, um, this one, as I say, it has to be classed as a strong ale. It comes in at 10% ABV, but it's a blend of different vintages of the Rusty Nail Imperial Stout, like I said earlier, an Imperial Oatmeal Stout with licorice and cinnamon in it, from what I understand. And there's also a porter mixed into this, which was designed specifically for this particular re uh, release. But the malt base in this is a uh, two-row pale, Brown, Black, Munich, Crystal 120, Roasted Barley, Carafa 2, Crystal 60, Chocolate Malts as well as some Flaked Oats. And it's hopped with Williamette, Columbus, Cascade Chinook and a little bit of Hallertau Mittelfru. And it contains uh, blue, uh, Brewer's Licorice and Cinnamon Bark 
as we sort of indicated earlier when we were talking about Rusty Nail. But yeah, Rusty Nail is the one that I've heard I really need to try from this brewery. So we'll see if we can get a bottle of that from uh, the likes of Beer Dome or one of the big U uh, American importers in Europe. But uh, yeah, I don't think we need to say anything else about it. Does it say anything interesting on the can? Not really, it's just got the American regulations on it. But uh, yeah, let's get this guy out into the glass and see what it's all about. As I say, this is a brewery I have heard very, very good things about. So nice to finally feature them here on the channel. And this will be a sipper for me over the next couple of hours. My Friday night beer when I'm tired and can't be arsed going out anywhere. So here we are. That looks good. So yeah, you can see the head on that's going to disappear quite quickly. But when we poured this beer, we've got about 80, 90% of it out in the glass. It poured with about a half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of uh, medium to dark tan head. You can see that if we bring it up to the top of the, if we bring it up to the camera there, you can see that some bumpy bubbles sitting there on the surface and a few foamier ones the further up that you go. But as you would expect from this particular beer, if you know what it is, it's got that lovely dark ebony rosewood colour to it. If we shine the light through it, you can see that it's got a wee bit of a kind of Coca-Cola, Pepsi Max coloured edge. But overall, it looks pretty much as you would expect. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on a few things. One, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker coloured beer. But any barrel aging that you do or adjuncts you put into the beer will affect its colour as well. And when it comes to black beers like Imperial Stouts and Porters, it is actually quite difficult to uh, change the colour of these with different adjuncts. I've only seen it done once or twice with like beets and things, which is crazy. Uh, you don't often see that from American breweries right enough. But yeah, appearance wise, this is pretty much what you'd expect from the style. Not too much in the way of visible carbonation. I think we can go on and have a little look at the uh, aroma of this one. But before we do that, I'm just going to pause and blow my nose because I do have a little bit of a sniffle. And we're back with a clear nose. So let's have a little look at this beer then. Oh yeah, um, aroma wise, I'm just going to say straight away, this thing is absolutely beautiful. Um, oh. um, as I've mentioned on the channel many a time before, um, for me, you know, the American Imperial Stouts are just a little bit different from the European ones. I think the European ones are very kind of thick and very sticky, whereas the American ones, they're just a bit lighter in their mouthfeel and they're a wee bit kind of smoother in terms of their flavour. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, you can do a few things to play with the Imperial Stout as a style, you know. You can do double mash, which will give you that big sticky mouthfeel. You can do a longer wort boil, which is going to give you the more leathery brown sugary notes and a wee bit of a complexity in terms of flavour. Uh, and you can also add all these adjuncts and things into them and barrel age them. So quite a few, you know, three or four different ways you can really play with this style. And, you know, doing cuvées, of course, is not very common. And that's one of the things that makes this beer very interesting. But the, this one in particular, um, I think we're just getting this one at a good age. It doesn't say when it was canned, um, packaged on the 10th of November Wait, no, no, that's going to be the other way around because it's America. The 11th of October, 2023. So we're drinking this beer when it's about six months old. And the interesting thing about this is that it smells very, very smooth. And usually when you age an Imperial Stout for, you know, a year or two or something like that, you start to get these very silky, chocolatey notes out of this one. But you're already getting that out of this beer, probably because it has been barrel aged and then it is a cuvee so you have to bear this in mind but I think these silky notes are a little bit more pronounced particularly in American brewed um, imperial stouts and it must just be the difference between say the German crystal malts that I'm used to from Europe and the American Turos and things like this but you saw there's a whole bunch of different malts in this but anyway um, this beer really gives you everything that you would expect aroma wise from this kind of style because it it is in essence an imperial stout with a wee bit of porter blended in. So we'll talk about this beer as an imperial stout going forward, just to be clear. But yeah, let's break the aroma of this one down then and describe it for you a wee bit more in depth. So the backbone of the beer, um, you have a little bit of this 
if you think about like a chocolate muffin or a chocolate brownie or something like this, the backbone of the beer is the sort of cakey crust that sticks to the baking tray when you make one of these things. That really is what lingers in here. But you've got a little bit of woodiness in this one, which is great. Um, so yeah, a little bit of woodiness in there, tiny little bit of cracker and stuff. But then above all of that, you get this fluffy, like chocolate cakey sort of thing coming out of this one. So yeah, fluffy chocolate cake. Um, yeah, lovely fluffy chocolate cake in there. Um, a little touch of nuttiness as well. I don't know, like pecans, pralines maybe. Um, I'm not overly familiar with my different kinds of nuts, I have to admit that. But yeah, you certainly get... Um, this one comes across as being very light and very kind of sponge cakey rather than having a little bit more rye bread as some of the European imperial stouts would have. Um, so you have to remember as well, when you barrel age a beer like this, it's always going to sacrifice a little bit of its mouthfeel to give you all these infused flavours. And we do have a bit of porter in here, which is similar to the stout and flavour profile, but it drinks um, a lot more lightly, lighter, as I guess we could say. But um, yeah, the aroma profile, this is very interesting. So yeah, fluffy, sort of chocolate. Um, yeah, fluffy, kind of light, chocolatey, um, sponge cakey note to this one. Um, overall, yeah, fluffy, light, chocolatey, sponge cake. Um, above that, there is a wee bit of like a wholemeal brown bready character to this one. I so say you don't really get rye bread out of this, but then you get all the chocolate. So for me, there's a good little bit of that 80-90% cocoa chocolate. There's a nice wee bit of a, a milky sort of thing coming out of this one as well. The kind of milky chocolate, you know, 40-50% cocoa. A little bit of brown sugar in there, kind of toasty brown sugar. A little bit of a more leathery sort of brown sugary character in this one as well. And uh, yeah, the way all of that pieces together, I think, is uh, is very, very nice. So yeah, the way all of that goes together, I think, is, uh, is really interesting, this one. So yeah, leathery kind of notes, toasty brown sugar. And then, uh, yeah, you have um, above that some kind of, there's a wee bit, I would say, it's actually quite sweet. It's got like a bit of sweet caramel to it, this one a bit of toasty brown sugar. I don't know if I'd go as far as treacle molasses in this one, but the brown sugar doesn't come across as all that leathery either. But with barrel aged um, imperial stouts, you know, some of the barrel aging can take away a wee bit from the, the more leathery notes if you uh, have indeed done a longer wort boil. But yeah, all in all, it smells exactly as you'd expect from an imperial stout, but I think we're going to get a lot more out of this one from the flavour than the actual aroma. So yeah just bear that in mind but on the uh, hoppy side of things this beer is kind of what you'd expect in that regard as well there's a little touch of earthiness in there you do get some nice floral aromatic notes out of this one and of course the longer that you age this beer and the longer that it sits in the barrel the more the hoppy character is going to drop out but you still get the remnants of a floral note in there and a wee bit of earthiness there's also a little touch of grassiness to this one as well which i think is great and then, yeah, on the uh, fruity side of things, you have uh, some really, really nice uh, characters, uh, characteristics coming out of this one as well. So, uh, yeah, the fruity side of this beer is what you'd expect. If you smell this one, you have that little bit of like sharp raisin, of course, a little bit of like juicy plum as well. And you can smell, you know, the dates, the prunes, the more dried fruity characters. Big, big sort of figgy note as well. And then, yeah, a lot of like black currant, juicy black currant. And then on top of that, you've got the kind of brighter blackberry and things. Well, you met whenever you put it into a big dark beer like this, it's always going to give you those big, juicy, um, berry ish notes. So, um, yeah. William Met and Galena, I think, are the two American hops that are very, very good in these particular styles. Uh, but yeah, this beer, nothing really surprising with this one in terms of its um, in terms of its uh, aroma composition. But I think this one will give us a lot of complexity when we actually taste it. So take a wee bit of time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck in. But uh, I think it's about time that we have a taste of this and just uh, 
see what it's all about. So yeah, this one is the Melange, uh, uh, the 2023 vintage, a barrel aged cuvee, which consists of different vintages of um, Fremont Brewing's Rusty Nail and Imperial Oatmeal Stout with um, cinnamon and uh, licorice added into the brew. But this beer also contains a little bit of porter, which was brewed exclusively for this particular brand. But 10% strong ale, technically, this one. It should be quite nice. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skoll, cheers. Yeah. It's pretty damn good, I have to say. Um, first impression is, this beer is actually a slightly more spicy, dry and roasty toasty imperial style. It's certainly um, leaning toward that more old school part of the spectrum, which for me is nice because there's so many of these very sweet, oily, pastry stout things out there these days. But to try something like this that's just, that is just kind of proper old school, like RIS, Russian Imperial Stout, I think is uh, really nice. So. For, for me, that gives that means that it should get a big thumbs up. Um, yeah, everything you'd want from this style. Big roasty, toasty black malts in there. Good little bit of smoothness in the malt base. Bit of sweetness, little bit of fruity character. Um, overall, I think it's a, a really, really nice beer. So yeah, glad that I got to try this one. Um, so I just need to pop my ear. That's better, now I can hear again. So. Yeah, let's try and break this one down then and describe the flavour a bit more in depth. We'll start in the middle third of the palate, as we always do. I'll tell you something though, this thing's really slick and smooth and slightly oily in terms of how it goes together. You can really feel with this beer how the barrel aging just, you know, takes down the mouthfeel a little bit and gives you the slickness and the lightness. Um, but yeah. Middle third of your palate with this beer then. You can feel the backbone of this one. You've got a lovely little bit of that kind of smooth American oak in there, but it doesn't come across as being overly spirity. Um, the American oak for me, as I've explained on the channel many times before, American oak for me is a little bit smoother and a little bit sweeter than, uh, than European oak. I think European oak is a little bit drier, but it also shows more vanilla type character. So in the backbone of this beer, you can certainly feel some of that slightly smoother American oak, and it does have a wee touch of like a bourbon type spirit in it. And it's quite a an aromatic bourbon in some ways, actually. Um, and I'm not overly familiar with bourbon. You know, being Scottish, you don't really need to go to bourbon because of all the stuff we have ourselves. But yeah, so you can feel the woody backbone of the beer, a little bit of the spirit layer above that, and then you have um, above that you start to get the actual kind of cakey and, and malty elements of the beer. So let's have a little look at that. But yeah, for me, that um, the backbone of this beer, uh, on top, the backbone of the beer itself, you can feel above the kind of spirity layer, you've got that sort of cake, crusty layer in there, as I say, the bit of cake that's in contact with the, the edge of the baking tray. So you've got a wee bit of that in there, but above that, you get this sort of like chocolate sponge sort of thing. It's like a chocolate muffin, chocolate sponge cake type deal. But then above that, you start to get a wee bit of a more like wholemeal, brown bready kind of layer. And then above that, you start to get the cocoa and chocolate notes out of this one. So at the back of that middle third of your palate, you have, um, um, you get some, uh, at the back of that middle third of your palate, you can feel it's like 80, 90% cocoa chocolate, which is really, really nice. So big, big, strong, dark chocolatey notes in this one. But then, yeah, <coughs> as you move further forward, you can feel the chocolate kind of mellows out and you reach a sort of 60, 70% cocoa chocolate with this one. As I've said before, many a time, sweeter flavours come out further forward on the palate, more dark and uh, 
more dark dry and bitter flavours come out further back so yeah above the kind of brown bready layer you've got the chocolatey notes coming out of this one Yeah, above the chocolatey layer in this beer, you do get a wee bit of, um, you can feel there's like a little oily bubble there in the middle of your palate where the brown sugars come out of the beer. So you can feel there is a slight layer of like a slightly leathery brown sugar, a little bit toasty, but then in the dead centre of your palate, you feel a wee bit more of this kind of treacle molasses type note coming out of the beer, which is interesting because generally speaking, this as an imperial stout is quite slick and quite light. As I say, I talk about this as an imperial stout because for the most part it is, but there's a wee bit of porter in there too, which is obviously going to lighten up the mouthfeel as well. But um, yeah, there's just a little bit of that treacle molasses note in the dead centre of your palate, which you would kind of expect with it being 10% ABV and a wee bit of leathery brown sugar under it and a bit of a toastiness to it too. But to be honest, at that point, I think we've covered everything that we need to say about the... Um, I think we've covered everything we really need to say about the, the middle third of your palate in this beer. The only other thing I would add is that there's a wee bit of nuttiness comes out of this beer into the aftertaste, but most of the complexity in this one is there. But there's part of me wants to say that this is actually quite a straightforward beer in a lot of ways. Um, but it's just really nicely done. Um, so yeah, onto the back third of your palate then. So the border region between middle and back third of your palate, you get a wee bit of like the kind of almost like kind of sponge cakey, chocolate sponge cakey note in the base. Then you get a bit more of a kind of brown bready character on top of that. And I would say that in that border region, you start to get a wee bit of the cinnamon uh, note out of this one. It does have a little bit of spice. But the base of that back third of the palate, you can feel a little bit of the woody character in there, which feels a bit drier. You've got a very slightly, a very slight spirity layer in this one, but that doesn't take over the flavour of the beer. Then, yeah, you've got that sponge, chocolatey sponge cakey layer there, which feels a bit lighter, taller and more airy. And above that, you've got a wholemeal brown bready character uh, coming out of this one as well, which... Uh, it's really nice and again that feels a little bit lighter and more airy but you can feel some of the kind of chocolatey notes just creeping over the top of that and as you go into the back third of the palate the sort of 80-90% cocoa chocolate just creeps over there and it gives you that more toasty well fired um, chocolatey character as well so yeah the way all of that pieces together I think is very nice and then above everything else you've got the yeasty character in there so overall really interesting composition in this beer. But yeah, in terms of the yeasty side of the beer, for me it's quite interesting. Like the yeasty side of this beer, you can feel this really dense, sort of like plum alcohol soaked Christmas pudding in the middle of that yeasty character. And as you move further out from that, it's a little bit more like a kind of oily rye bread. And then the outside of it is more like a kind of uh, rye bready bread crust. And like I said, all of that sits on top of everything on that back third of the palate and into the uh, the further into the aftertaste that you go you can feel that Christmassy that Christmas puddingy type note the kind of um, the kind of yeah Christmas puddingy note the sort of boozy yeah the kind of boozy note to it as well and definitely yeah back third of your palate you can feel the flavor is taller and as you move into the middle third of your palate it just kind of condenses down and squashes together that little bit more but um yeah i think that covers everything we need to say about the malty and yeasty side of the beer let's go to the hoppy side of things so as i said earlier this beer is a cuvee it's a blend of things of barrel aged beers and stuff like that it doesn't have all that much in terms of hoppy character but the remnants of what remain uh, are still there and obviously if you age this beer a bit more the hoppy character would drop out even further but yeah in the back corners of the palate there's definitely a little bit of earthiness as you move further forward it gives you that little touch of herbal character and as you push further forward toward the front corners of your tongue it gives you a little bit more of a kind of floral 
uh, aromaticity as well, and that lingers into the aftertaste. But yeah, around the front curve of the tongue, it's that wee bit lighter and uh, and more grassy, I would say. So yeah, I like the way that that pieces together for sure. So yeah, um, I don't know if there's anything more we need to say about the fruity side of this beer, to be honest with you. Uh, or or the, the hoppy side of the beer. We should go on to the fruity side of things. A bit tired when I'm filming this review, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, let's do that front third of your palate then. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a nice little bit of bready build up in there, and you have the base of that chocolate sponge, almost like it more like a chocolate brownie at this point. I'm finding that chocolate spongy character that I was talking about really feels more like a big oily chocolate brownie now. But yeah, chocolate brownie kind of flavours. A wee bit of a more chocolate sponge character above that and then a bit more of a kind of brown bready sort of thing. But the base of that um, front third of your palate, you've got a wee bit of a um, kind of, how would we say, you have a little bit more of a toasty, uh, I'm getting more and more of a kind of toasty, well-fired black malty note out of the base of this beer the further I go into the aftertaste too. So yeah, you get more of that roasty, well-fired black crust. And that probably sits underneath the kind of cakey sponge layer that I was talking about. So yeah, you've got the wood in there, you've got the spirit, roasty black malts, cake, and a bit of like brown bread above that. Then you start to get the oily bubble with all the fruits on that front third of your palate. So yeah, this... The flavour of this beer really is evolving the more that you, you drink of it. I think it gets more roasty, toasty and bitter the more it kind of warms up, which is quite interesting. But yeah, let's focus on the fruity side of the beer then, just to round off the tasting section. So yeah, the fruity side of the beer, um, you do get this really nice... Um, sort of sharp raisiny type note in there so you can feel that at the top but then as you go underneath that you get a lot of plums out of this one you've got raisins plums underneath that you start to get like prunes dry plums and there's a wee bit of this kind of datey character and as you move further forward toward the middle of that front third of your palate it's more kind of figgy yeah you get more kind of figs and then it's like black currants in the front half of the front third of your palate and a wee bit more of a, uh, yeah, a little bit more of a like blackberry sort of thing on top. Um, yeah, I like that about this one. So yeah, kind of fruity, big oily sort of fruity notes coming out of this one, um, the further into the aftertaste that you go. But really what lingers into the aftertaste for this beer is the kind of woodiness, the toastiness, and a bit of the kind of cakey character. Um, as well, but this is a proper old school RIS Russian Imperial Stout. This one, um, and it, it does because of the porter that's blended into this. I think the porter is what's lightening up the mouthfeel quite a lot. So, on that note, let's round off the review with a look at the mouthfeel. So, for me, this beer is kind of bottom end of full body. The carbonation has a little bit of a prickle to it. The beer does feel a little bit lighter than many Imperial Stouts you'll come across at this particular ABV, but for me, American Imperial Stouts generally feel a bit lighter in their mouthfeel than European Imperial Stouts, I think that's fair to say. IBU-wise, this one's near the top of the scale, sort of, I would say about 80 IBUs, potentially a little bit more than that. You've got that roasty toastiness and the woody character and the base that linger there. So the malt base, yeah. Woody note, spirit, roasty toastiness, the kind of cakey smoothness, and a wee bit of the kind of, it's more of a dark sweetness that you get out of this beer, in all honesty. And then, yeah, not much in the way of hoppy bitterness, but it's still a little bit there. You do get a wee bit of that kind of green component there at this point. We're drinking this beer at six months after its canning date. And then, yeah, you've got that kind of sharper red fruity note coming out of it too. But overall, um, really, really interesting beer, this one. One of the lighter Imperial Stouts that I've had. But um, yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to try more beers from this brewery and see what they're all about. But if you want a proper old school American RIS, um, this is a good place to uh, to look. So um, yeah, I think we can leave it at that for this one. This was the Melange, a 10% uh, Imperial Stout Porter Cuvie type thing from Fremont Brewing Company in Ballard. And 
pardon me, Fremont in Seattle and Washington over in the US. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fremont Brewing Company as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the near future. But this was a nice introduction to one of their beers. I'm going to go away and sip on one of the rest of this and film the short review, of course. So check out some of those uh, shorts that we've been filming. But until the next time, Slange is school. Cheers. Check out my social media. Check out Fremont Brewing Company's social media. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao just now.